never seen the kind of misery that I've witnessed in the last two years. I'm here to talk a little bit about health, and I was given a, a time limit of three minutes. I'll try and stick to that. Four minutes. You've been very generous. Specifically, I have some figures which I think may shock you, maybe they won't shock you, and I'm not going to read all this, but I came prepared to share some information with you. It's all available, it's all out there. The amount of research and information that has been done around the world on the effects of what so-called austerity has done to ordinary people like you and I and my patients is actually stunning. If austerity, and I hate calling it a word like austerity because it belies the misery that people face when they haven't got enough to eat or they cannot ho heat their homes or they, like my, some of my patients, have to decide whether they'll have their medicine every second day because they cannot afford to get their medicine. And that's why they're waiting years. We, we have a system which is steadily being privatized in health, as you know. What, if you ask yourself, why does it happen? I don't have all the answers, but I'll tell you one thing. Follow the money. If you follow the money, you can see why it happens. Why are they running down the public health system in this country, which was very good, but now is fifth from the bottom in the measured world? Fifth from the bottom, 61st out of 65 countries measured. We are just above Iran, but below India and a lot of Eastern European countries in the health care that's being provided currently. To sell and it on and privatise it. It's because they want to sell it on and privatise it. Why else would some of our entrepreneurs be pouring millions into buying up private clinics? Because they know there's multi-millions to be made if you can force people to share the few pennies they've got left to go and spend it in an exorbitant and inefficient private healthcare system. Easy money for them, Easy money for them is right. A couple of facts for you. For every, this is, these are all research-based. Stanford University, Oxford, UCC, around the world there's been an awful lot of research. For every 1% rise in unemployment, this is from the, the Maria Nyman, the Director of Mental Health Europe. For every 1% rise in unemployment, there's nearly the same rise in the number of suicides. And I won't talk about the rise in stillbirths the 21% rise in stillbirths that have been measured, or the thousands and thousands of suicides around the world. Let's just talk about Ireland. We haven't got enough time to go into all the details. But given the fact that our children cannot access child mental health services for one or two years locally, and we know, because there's proof, it's been scientifically shown that children have to have early intervention to have the best chance of recovery. We are storing up misery for the future by saving a few pennies now. And the government knows this. It's not about saving a few pen pennies, it's about making money for private entrepreneurs. In the UK, very similar things are happening. And a group of, of professionals, hundreds of professionals got together against the changes that they're seeing there where they're trying to privatise things. And they found the, the psychological explanations for unemployment isolate, blame, stigmatise unemployed people. They reinforce the myths about the cultures of worklessness and they obscure the realities of the labour market and the political choices that underpin that. The sister of one of the men who committed suicide not long ago says, we must keep up the pressure to highlight these issues because in terms of how we treat our most vulnerable people we are becoming a crueler, more backward society. That's what they are trying to do. I will leave you with this one thought. UCC research showed that well over 500 extra suicides occurred in Ireland between 2008 and 2012. In those four years, over 500 extra suicides directly attributable to the political choice that Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael and the Greens and Labour made. That was a choice. 
because Germany, Sweden and Iceland made a different choice of stimulus, not austerity. So that choice cost over 500 extra suicides and that's quite apart from the misery and it's quite apart from all the knock-on effects which are terrible. Each one suicide, there must be lots of people here who've been touched by someone who's killed themselves. Given the fact we are now another four years further on, the real figure to date is probably well over a thousand. And I'll leave you with this thought. In 1920 and 1921, there were around 550 members of the IRA who were killed and around 200 civilians who were killed fighting for the independence of Ireland. Over that number, Philip Oil, the Greens, Fine Gael and Labour have been directly responsible for more deaths than was in the War of Independence. Thank you. Yeah.